Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Compose for Wear OS Code Along session. I'm Ksenia Shumelchik from the Android Developer Relations team, and today I'm joined by Jeremy. Hello, I'm Jeremy Walker. I'm an engineer also on the Android Developer Relations team. Earlier this year, we launched a major Wear OS platform release along with the updated Wear Material Design Guidelines. These guidelines are in line with the new material design language, and in future, we'll expect all apps to be compliant with new guidelines. To help you, we are bringing the best of Jetpack Compose to Wear OS. Compose for Wear OS not only simplifies UI development, but also introduces components that are already compliant with Wear material design out of the box, meaning that you can more easily follow the design guidelines and create beautiful apps with less code. During today's session, you will learn how to create composables specifically for Wear OS, so you can start writing your own apps right away. And now over to Jeremy to tell us more what exactly we are going to build today. OK, great. Thanks, Ksenia. So um, you guys should already, or everyone should already have access to the, um, to the code lab. It should be in the uh, description in the live chat. Um, if you don't, just open up search and search for Google Code Labs. Uh, it should be this one up here. If you click into that, uh, you can just filter by category. There's a lot of good code labs there. Uh, and if you go down to Wear OS, you should see it right here, Wear OS Code Lab. So Ksenia did a great job talking to you why sh you should check out Compose, so I'm going to skip that. Um, let me cover what we're going to learn first. So we're going to talk about some similarities and differences between your previous experience with Compose and Wear OS. Uh, we're going to actually create some simple composables that work on Wear OS, then some Wear OS specific composables. Uh, after that, we'll close out with the uh, Wear OS's version of both the lazy column and the scaffold. Uh, so this is what you'll build. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to be a list of uh, Wear OS L, uh, composables, and, and it's going to be wrapped in the scaffold. And then up top, you can see the scaffold will show the time with curved text. It'll add a um, an indicator here for when you want to scroll. Uh, so we'll build all that out. Uh, just a quick FYI on the prereqs. Uh, you do have to have a basic understanding of um, Android development. N you need to know some Kotlin and then at least some basic knowledge of Compose. Jeremy, what do developers want to learn more about Compose? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So I've linked it here. Uh, you can see that uh, there's tons of great content on Compose. Um, one of my favorite things was the pathway that kind of is like a checklist where it gives you articles and videos and uh, code labs as well. Uh, and then if you're, because this is ADS, there were two other code longs, which I strongly recommend you check out. There's one that's an intro to Compose. Uh, so that'll cover all the basics. And then there's one on migrating from views to composables. Yeah, and uh, it's also important to note that everything that you will learn for Compose will translate directly to Compose for Wear OS. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you do have any questions that come up during the code lab, you can actually ask us and the team. Yeah, and today we have uh, more folks who are on the live stream. We have John, Yuri, Steve, and Alex from Wear Engineering and DevRel teams, and they will help us to answer any questions that you might have, which are related to Compose for Wear OS, uh, and they will be answering all these questions in the live chat. And I might also bring some questions live as we do the code lab. Great, let's start. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you need to get the code. Uh, you can do that through uh, git here if you'd use this command. If you don't know it, that's okay. You can just download it here. Um, and when you bring it up, you should have something like this. Uh, you're basically going to have two modules. The start one is where we're going to do all of our work. Uh, and then the finished is if you get lost along the way, you can kind of use that as a reference or you can look at what the end result will be. And then obviously we have our uh, Gradle files. So. Um, Let's run this first. Actually, before I run it, you just make sure you have your um, your emulator, and you can get that at the AVD manager. Um, I obviously already created my own, but you just create a new one. You might need to download this while we're talking. So if you go to Wear OS, you can see there's a bunch of options. The most prevalent shapes of devices right now are the round ones, so I'd probably start with that. And then you just click Next. And then if you need to download it, you can. Uh, the latest version of Wear OS is actually API level 30, which is what I'm going to use. So and if I also, 
Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we developing for Compose, can developers still use the preview annotation for instant composable preview and styler styling? Oh yes, they can. Um, so uh, here's the emulator, so you can see the Compose. I would say check check that out, make sure it works. Uh, and then if I actually go to finish, maybe I'll do that. Uh, let me minimize that. So uh, so you don't have to. Work, uh, we're going to do a lot of our code here. In this reusable component so this is all filled out what we'll end up making uh, but if you look here you can see i've actually set up some previews specifically with where um where os sizes so it looks pretty nice uh, yeah, but yeah we'll looks, go we'll do that along the way looks good um shall we maybe start with uh, with the steps which are required to create a new project oh yeah yeah so uh so if you want to just start coding right away uh I'd recommend going to this new, and then if you go to import samples, uh, there's a bunch of great samples across a lot of things here. Uh, but if you search for, uh, well, we'll say compose, uh, and you can see there's a bunch of great samples here. But if you actually go to the wearable section and hit start, you get this basically this nice little uh, hello world app, um, and you just start that. It'll download and set up the project right for you right there. Great. Well, uh, let me give you an overview of the uh, the, the project itself. Um, so obviously, you have your Gradle files. We'll cover that in a second. The manifest, that's going to be the same, so I'm not going to cover that. Um, most of the stuff you're going to do is going to be here. So we're going to have a main activity, which is where everything starts. We'll do a little bit of work there. I'll talk through that in a second. Uh, the preview constants, these are just constants I set up, so you have a nice um, where device uh, set up when you're doing previews. Um, so don't worry about that. You don't have to look at that. We'll actually do most of our programming here in this reusable components uh, file. Right now, it's just filled with a bunch of empty composable functions. And then obviously, I have the themes where I set up the theme for the whole project. Uh, let's, so let's get started on the dependencies. Yep. So most of uh, where related dependency changes you will make will be at top architectural layers, which Jeremy is showing them. Now, um, these are the ones which are highlighted in red. Uh, however, you will need to use proper where OS dependencies for material foundation and navigation libraries, which are different from the libraries that you used before on mobile. Right. So that means um, a lot of the dependencies you already use for Jetpack Compose actually won't change. So anything down here. Uh, won't change. But let's just have a look at that in the uh, the project, because I think that's easier. Um, so you can just open up the started uh, build Gradle file. And if I scroll down here, by the way, if you look at the code lab and you're following along, I have a lot of to-dos to take you to the, so you can search and go exactly to the right spot that we're talking about. So check that out. Um, I'm just going to walk through them here, because I think it's, it's a little bit better like this. Uh, so First, I have my general Compose dependencies. This is the same as you're used to. Um, here, I actually have, you can see it's a Compose material. Um, you're used to using this on your other projects, generally when you use uh, Compose, but you have to use the where version. And actually, uh, Jeremy, maybe before we dive into implementation details, uh, can you explain why developers actually need to use a different version of dependencies for where? Sure. So um, where has its own material theme, so it's all color, shapes, and typography, and that's all targeted to wearables. Uh, so in turn, other composables, so in that, composable functions like buttons, cards, icons, et cetera, they all use that theme. Uh, and then they even make some, own, some of their own customizations themselves. So if you don't use that, then what's displayed is going to be a little bit unexpected as far as fonts and colors and all that stuff. It won't look quite right. Uh, so you want to make sure use that. In addition, uh, we have brought over all the ones that make sense on where. So some of them we didn't bring over that really don't really fit in where. So this, it's kind of a nice place to, to guide you in the right direction, but also take care of all that, that stuff for you as far as making up nice on the wearable. Uh, great. So the, the next one is, uh, this one is the foundation. So again, foundation, you're used to this one. Um, I'm actually going to add this one here. But wait, the foundation, we right now have two dependencies. Do we need to keep both? Oh, yeah. So this is additive. So whereas is the material you replace it, this one's additive. So you can actually see up here I'm using the general one. 
And the reason for that is we build on top of that. So the key difference is we support round screens. So uh, the wire foundation includes curved row. So it makes it really easy to lay out content along the edges of a curved screen. Um, usually you want to use that with curved text, which comes with the, the material uh, library. And then you can do nice things like curve the text at the bottom of the screen or however you want. Uh, actually, I have a sample that shows that and we'll make sure we link that. So if you want to do something like that, you can check that out. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned one more dependency, navigation. What about right, so, that one? Oh, yeah, sorry. Didn't mean to earn rot. Um, yeah, so navigation, same thi thing. You want to, this is actually a replacement like material. We aren't using it here, so I'm not going to go into it, but basically this uh, supports navigation, but also our swipe to dismiss, which is kind of like our back gesture for Wear OS. So if you are using navigation, uh, make sure you use that. Great, so that's that's the uh, the dependencies. Now we want to go into, I do want to give an overview of the main activity and then we'll start coding. So I'll be pretty quick with this because again, I um, actually didn't make any changes here, but uh, so again, I'll be fast because we kind of expect you to have some compose knowledge. So just like any compose, I'm in this case, I'm using a component activity. Uh, I set the content and I call a wearable, um, a wearable, or sorry, a composable function. And in here, uh, I'm setting the theme. So uh, this is the same standard stuff you're used to. So if I actually look at my theme, you can see here, I'm doing what you would always do in Compose, which is uh, I'm just setting the material theme and then I'm customizing my colors and typography. Uh, in my case, I'm not setting the shape and that's because we've optimized all the shape sizes for uh, both round and non-round like square and rectangle devices. So we always recommend you don't, met, you don't change the shapes. Uh, so that's what I've done here. And uh, for Sims file, uh, is it something inherited from the Android Studio template or developers need to import Sims file every time they create a new project? Oh, yeah. So the new one, the one I showed where you create that new one, I'll, it actually, we set it up so that it pulls in a theme just like this and it sets it up for you. Uh, if you made it from scratch, you'd obviously have to create this yourself. But again, if you use that, uh, you'll be all set. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so I've set the theme. This, again, I'm going to fly through this. I'm just setting up the lazy list state. You can see down here I have a lazy column, so I'm going to list a bunch of stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, I set some modifiers, so I don't want to set them re recreate the modifiers for every composable we're making, so I kind of set them up at the top so we can reuse them. Uh, and for you, uh, modifiers are basically a collection of modifier elements that decorate or add behavior to Q compose UI's elements. So, for example, padding width, uh, size, you can see that's what I do here. I just make sure it's the width of the uh, lazy column. And then for uh, the icons, because I'm going to set up some icons, I basically set the size and then I align it. Um, outside of that, oops, sorry, we have the lazy column. Again, I'm just setting some standard stuff, content padding, a modifier, uh, the arrangement. And then here's the good stuff. Um, so each of these items will be shown. Um, Right now, these are all empty functions, these, these ones down here, and those are what we're, we're going to populate. Uh, and then up here, this is just a hello world, but uh, that's just so you can see it was working when we started the project. All right. Uh, does it ma make sense also cover architecture best practices when using Compose for Wear OS? In particular, um, should there be always one main activity and the reusable components? or one main activity per screen with shared reusable components? Yeah, so um, so usually with Compose, usually you'll only have a couple of user journeys. So you'll just have a couple activities for each screen so that it's, it's much easier to support swipe to dismiss that way. Um, but with Composables, it actually works well. So um, you want to use one activity and multiple Composable screens. Uh, and that sample I talked about earlier that shows the curved text, that actually has multiple screens and uses navigation to move between them. So we'll link that at the end. But if you're interested in seeing a one activity, multiple screens uh, example, you can just go and check that out. OK, cool. Um, all right, so now we have a better understanding of the project setup. We can start with creating simple composables. And uh, the Compose for Wear OS material library offers many of the same composables that you're probably already used on mobile but those are optimized for the watch. We will start with uh, three composables, button, text, and card. Right. So um, 
Uh, we'll start with the button one. Uh, if you're following along, you just go to the uh, simple composables. So I'm just going to mainly do this in uh, studio. So first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this um, this hello world thing. By the way, you've probably noticed there's some warnings. Uh, that's because I have I've set up imports already for you. So when you paste in your code, you don't have to Im manually import everything. As we go through this, you'll start noticing that um, these will go down. Um, also, you probably if you really have a good eye, you might have noticed the tabbing's off here. That's just because we're going to paste the scaffold in here, and then the tabbing will be correct. I didn't want you to have to worry about tabbing everything yourself. OK, so we, we removed this. Now we're going to go to reusable components. This is where we're going to do a majority of the work. So um, let's first see what we're going to build, because I think that would help to get a visualization. So we're going to build a button that just looks like this, nice purple little button. And this is optimized for wear. So let's do that first. So first thing you want to do, again, I've got these to do so you can find them and you can do a copy and paste. I'm not going to copy and paste myself. Uh, but you, you can do it if you want to to follow along. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a row uh, because in this case, I want to oh, um, I want to center my text. Otherwise, it'll kind of expand the button out, which I don't want. So I'm just going to set a row where I uh, reuse the modifier that was passed in. This, that's the one I, I talked about earlier. And then I'm just going to set the horizontal arrangement to center. Um, next, I'm going to create the button itself. Oh, sorry about that. So I'm going to do that. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the size. Uh, the nice here, thing here is we give you a bunch of defaults that are optimized for wear. So um, when you set the size itself, I'm just going to choose a large size. Um, the on click. Uh, Again, this is a UI demo, so I'm not going to add a click. Normally here, if you had a regular uh, regular composable, you probably press pass in a Lambda that then calls up and that's being passed down to trigger something else happening. So I'm not doing that here, but uh, you would want to do that if this was a real app. Uh, next, I want to add a nice little icon. So um, maybe, let's see, what should I do? Um, we'll do a... Maybe a phone icon. And then um, we'll add, this is a content description. So we could say phone action. Um, this is just for accessibility. So it's always good to pass that in. And then I'm just going to do an icon modifier. OK, so uh, let's see what this looks like. All right, so phone, so there we go. So we have a nice little phone icon. It looks okay. You'll notice the styling's not correct. I didn't, in my previews, I didn't pass in the material uh, styling because I wanted you guys to see some differences as we between uh, the final product and the other one. So um, that's why that's different. I just wanted to make it a little more interesting as we go back and show everything. So this, we'll see it live. So the, here's the button with my style applied. Yeah, and one quick point about icons. Yeah, Jeremy, if you get back to your uh, rounded phone icon. Um, so here we use material icon extended library, which means uh, that you can find that other material libraries may also have Wear OS counterpart. Uh, so you uh, should use a specific version for Wear for material icons and for the rest. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because you can mix and match some of those uh, material libraries. Uh, okay, great. So next we've done, let's look at text. This is pretty straightforward. This is kind of what we want to do. We just want some text to appear. So I'm going to do copy and paste this like you normally would um, if you were following along the, the uh, in the code lab. Uh, and I'll just go through these really quickly. So modifier, I'm just, this is just going to be the full width. Again, you should know what that is. I'm just centering the text. Next, I'm setting the colors. I'm using the primary here. And then after that, um, I'm setting the string from a string resource. Now, by the way, the previews I've set up is groups, so you can kind of choose which one you want to see rather than all of them at once. Uh, so go ahead and choose text, and then we'll see how this looks. All right, so it should, should say, oh, it's kind of hard to see. It says square device. 
uh, which is perfect. So if I run this, it should show up there. There we go. Net says round devices. Yeah, and we actually have different strings for emulator and preview. Can you maybe explain what happened? Oh, sure. So um, let me go back here. So actually, uh, if you if you look at the resources, um, we actually support both round and non-round, which is the default for um, for string resources. So you can set the same string and then uh, Wear OS is smart enough to figure out, oh, this is a round device, so I'll serve up the the, the string from this resource uh, versus the other one. So it's really helpful if you want to do a little bit different text based on whether maybe it's wrapped or not. OK, great. So now we've done that. We've covered all this. Uh, let's look at a card composable. Um, this is going to look like this. So let's have a look at it. Uh, start programming, up, programming it out. Uh, let me hide this. OK, so split. So now I'm going to do the card. So let's have a look at this. Uh, OK, card. Oh, actually, before. Uh, so on on when you're building normally, and maybe you built for uh, for mobile or something like that, you've, you're used to the card composable. Instead, we have two different composables. We have uh, we have the app card composable, um, which allows you to have an icon. And then you have title card, which is more text-based, but I want to make mine a little bit more um, pretty, so I'm going to add an icon. That's why I'm going to use app card here. So app card. Uh, where did my cursor go? There it is. All right. So this is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to set uh, the same modifier I passed in before, um, rounded. Uh, so in this case, I'm using, again, the icon extended library in conjunction with this. I'm going to do uh, we'll say message, and I'll just say this is a message action. Again, this is for accessibility. Um, again, I'm going to pass in the icon modifier. Uh, oops. Modifier. There we go. Uh, and then you can see I set a bunch of items uh, here. So I'm going to give you the preview so you can see what it looks like to explain that a little bit. Yeah, and uh, for those parameters, this is works like in a standard compose. So um, instead of passing strings, you actually have slots here, and uh, you can give more flexibility and uh, add wherever you want to those slots. So it's kind of like a template. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you can see I'm just matching these up with the things here. So you have like app name would go in this slot, uh, time here, title here, and then content. I only have one, but I could add more of these if I wanted to. Um, if, if I wanted to build it out a little bit more. But yeah, that, that helps. I'm just being lazy and just adding text uh, composables, but you can definitely do, do more. So let's see what this looks like. All right, so there we go. There's a nice little um, card for you. Um, so at this point, you're probably seeing like, all these simple composables like, oh, I, these look e almost exactly like what I'm used to. If we actually looked up top, you'd see that the only difference is really they're coming from the where, uh, the where libraries. By the way, again, you're probably seeing errors as we go through these disappear again, because I, I wanted to make sure I imported everything for you uh, so you didn't have to do it yourself. And then, uh, okay, so we're done with the compo simple composables. Um, Jeremy, I think it might be worth mentioning where developers can find the full list of available components. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is really actually handy if you do this a lot, um, which I do. If you go to developer.android.com such jetpack, uh, there's this really handy uh, API explorer that I use all the time. Um, it's right here. You just search for whatever you want. It could be the use case. It'll match you to the library or just the library itself. And in this case, I'm going to do where, uh, and it, it, you click and it takes you right into the release notes and you can kind of see what's happening. You can say, oh, wow, yesterday we released another release. Awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, but it also takes you to the API reference, which is super helpful. Uh, so this is where like you can see everything you need. Um, 
I'm on a little bit of a smaller screen, so you can't see, but usually I have a list here as well. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see all the top level functions. Uh, and this will actually give you a list of all the uh, composable functions you can use. Uh, and if you're more into the uh, doing it on here, you can do that as well. You can um, just click in, just right click uh, and go to, you can go to the implementation and it should give you, you can see a list of all of them. So you can see the text is here. It gives you explanations if I make it all code. Uh, you can just go through and read all of these. So that's a, a bit of an easier way if you want to do it that way. Okay, and uh, perhaps we should also show where developers can find the latest where material guidelines for app overlays. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I so, mean, UX guidelines. Yeah, so if you go to developer.android.com slash where, um, this is just the main page, but we have like a, I won't dive too deep into it, but we have design guidelines where we kind of walk through everything. There's a whole list of them. You could go to overlays. It explains it all. Check it out there. Okay, cool. Uh, and just to remind that if you have any questions about Compose for Wear OS, feel free to ask them at the live chat. We have um, folks from Wear Engineering and Devrel teams who are helping and answering your questions over there. All right. Um, so we already know how to build very simple Wear OS components. And now let's actually look for the more in most interesting stuff and uh, in particular, how to create very unique composables and what are the steps that you need to take to customize and build such components for your app. So let's start with the chip. Yeah, so chips are meant to be a, a quick one tap action that makes especially good sense on where with its limited real estate. Um, and, and chips are actually specified in the material guidelines, which I point out here, um, but there isn't an actual composable function right now in the main uh, material library but there is in the uh the where one so uh this is what they look like uh you can see it can be as simple as this or it can be more complex where you have an icon and uh multiple text fields uh you can even have a uh, background like that to make it really uh, pretty if you want the one i'm going to be building is going to be fairly simple it's just going to be this little meditation chip so let's go over here um I'll scroll down to the chip example. So let's see here, chip. All right. So the first thing uh, I'm going, it's going to, I want to set as my modifier again. This is the same as I've been doing. Uh, but that the on click again. I'm, this is more of a UI demo, so I'm I'm just not going to do anything there. Um, now I do want to set some a label for this, so I, I create a text, and we're going to say it's. Um, five minute meditation uh, for max lines. Uh, I want to do just one. So that what this means is uh, the text, it'll just do one. And then I can say if I if I if there's overflow, if there's too much text, what do I want? So if I say ellipse, it'll basically cut it off and then add ellipses. Um, after that, I just want to add an icon. So uh, let's see if I can remember this. Uh, we'll say self improvement. Uh, we'll say meditation. And then uh, again, the icon modifier is what I passed along the whole time. So if we actually, uh, oops, I should have showed this and let me minimize that. So let me go to chip and then we'll just uh, build it up so you can see it live. And this should show us what a chip would look like. And you can see the code's quite simple uh, and that's the chip. And then if I actually uh, run it, I should get my, sty uh, my theme applied Yeah, there you go. There's the chip. All right, so let's talk about toggle chips next. Um, just close this out. So I, I want to again show you what it looks like. Uh, by the way, I added some examples just so you can see. So this is what a toggle chip looks like. It's just a one tap type action that you can do. Uh, so ours is going to look like we're just going to have a sound one like this. So I'll just go here about toggle chip. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm doing is because I'm going to show that turning off the, the, the switch off and on, I'm going to actually create some state. So I'm doing that through the remember uh, uh, remember call. So this is going to keep it uh, 
available through recomposition. And then I'm setting a mutable state. Uh, pretty straightforward. You should know this if you're used to uh, compose. Again, modifier, I just want to set the same modifier I'm used to, or then I'm passing in, sorry. Checked, I'm going to pass in that check state I just created. Uh, switch icon, so um, I talked about this. Well, I haven't talked about it, but uh, so you can set a, uh, you can do a checkbox. You can do a, a radio button off, a radio button on. There's lots of options. In my case, I'm just going to do the switch icon and just pass and checked. Uh, again, it, so this is just the callback. So I'm just basically saying, changing this, uh, the checked uh, variable to it when it's passed in. Uh, and then I'm just going to have a label. So I'll just say sound. Uh, again, I just want one max line. And then if, if it's too long, I want to cut it. I'll, I'll have it cut with some ellipses. Uh, and then if we actually look at what it would look like. We should get it here with, now again, this won't have my theme applied, but you can see that for the default, it gives this nice gradient. Uh, and then if we actually run it, you should see it show up here. And then I, I can switch it off and on once it, once I get it here. So this should have my theme. You can see that it has this nice gradient across with my purple theme. And then this is a color I set as well. You can see it turns off and on. Yeah, and there are also other options to customize toggle chips. So for instance, uh, you can set the background, use a checkbox or toggle, uh, but also we offer split toggle chips, which allows you to create um, um, a chip where left half is for handling a click event and the right half is for toggle itself. Right, and here's the example uh, so you can see it visually. Yeah, and, and chips are one of the basic building components that we recommend for Wear OS, which are part of our UX guidelines. OK, uh, shall we move to the next section? Yeah. Yeah, and we are going to talk about very specific version of lazy column, which is called scaly lazy column. Um, yeah, so you may know that lazy column is used on mobile to produce a vertically scrolling list. On where uh, we have around devices, which means uh, that we have a smaller, uh, smaller sizes and the top on the bottom. And in general, there is a less space to show items. Therefore, to better support such round devices, we created our own version of lazy column, which is specific for Wear OS. And uh, in, in, in the nutshell, scaling lazy column extends lazy column to support both scaling and transparency at the top and bottom edges uh, and also to make content more readable to the user as you can see on the demo right now that jeremy is showing each list item scales up when it gets closer to the center and then it scales back down uh, and also gets more transparency yeah exactly and here's a um Here's a concrete example with an app. You can see at the top, it gets smaller and uh, at the bottom as well. So this is actually really easy to do. Um, so we're done with the, uh, let's see, we're, we're done with the reusable components. We've done all that. Let's have a look at the main. Now we're gonna make our last changes to the uh, main activity. So, uh, so if you look here, you can see we have a couple to do's we need to do. Um, first thing is we have a scaling lazy list state. Well, we want to use our, or sorry, we have remember lazy list state. We want to change this to remember scaling lazy list state. Uh, and now we should have an error because a lazy column doesn't take this type of um, uh, state. So we just have to change this to scaling lazy column. Uh, and then it's not going to look any different here. <laughs> So I, I won't show that, but uh, if you actually run it, you could, that's where you can kind of see it. So give it a second to show up here. And there we go. So now if we actually look, um, you can try this at home. You can see it actually scrolls down and gets a little bit smaller and disappears. Same with the bottom, it kind of scrolls down. Yeah, but can we also customize how scaling works? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Um, actually, I have a block I can show here. Let's see. 
Uh, so this is just um, it's just a customization to make it really, really over the top. So I'll, I'll run that, and then you should be able to see it there. OK, so if I do it now, you can see it really gets large and really small. So you can really like change it a lot. Um, in our case, we're not doing that, but uh, the, the default doesn't do that, but we're doing it here. Uh, great. So now we're down to the uh, last step, which is the scaffold. Do you want to cover that, Ksenia? Yep, absolutely. Um, OK, so the scaffold is the last one component that we are going to cover today. Uh, as you may know, uh, there are some common UX patterns that we require developers to follow on Wear OS. And the scaffold provides a layout structure to help you line up components into these patterns. Uh, yeah, it works in a similar way to scaffold composable on mobile and gives pre-built templates for three very specific layouts, which includes such top-level components like time, vignette, and scroll position indicator. Yeah, and I think it's worth mentioning that uh, Scaffold already handles both round and square devices, which make things even easier for you. OK, uh, so you see that Jeremy is showing how um, those components look like. And l let's quickly cover each of them. First one is a time text. Uh, and regarding our latest material, where material guidelines, uh, we require apps to display time at the top of any screen within app overlay. So this composable already uses curved text under the hood and gives you a simple way to show the time without any extra work. The second one uh, is vignette. A vignette adds a blur effect at top and the bottom edges of the screen when the screen is capable for scrolling. And the last one is a position indicator which also known as a scrolling indicator. And uh, this component is aimed to show the current progress on the right side of the screen based on the type of the state object that you pass in. And uh, I guess in our code lab, we'll use scaling laser list state as an example. Right, okay, but before we can uh, do all this, we, we have to set up the scaffold. Uh, so go ahead and copy this, and then we'll go over, um, I guess I can leave that there for now. Uh, so if I go here, you can see this is the to-do. I just paste it in here. If you actually press Enter, it'll fill out the other bracket. So we've done that. So we can take off the Start one. Um, and then we can cut, I'm going to cut this, and I'm going to go down to the End part where it says End. And then you just add it there. Now, if I actually run this, um, you'll see that there's actually no difference um, because I'm not. I'm just creating an empty time text uh, vignette. Uh, but let's fill that out now. Uh, so yeah, there's no difference here. Uh, so so you can just copy this um, code. I'll just show you that because that's pretty easy. Um, I think we talked about time text. That, that's pretty well covered. So I'll just copy this. And then if we just replace this, uh, what I'm actually doing here is I because I, I moved up the, the state, um, I can check if it's scrolling. If it's scrolling, I don't want to show the time text because that can be uh, that can interfere with the content. But if it's not scrolling, I want to show the time text. So, um, so if I actually let's look at the the preview just so you can see it first, uh, and this will show you like a square type device, uh, and it should show up. Give it one second. There we go. So you can see it has it's straight text there. But um, if we run it on the emulator, it should show up as rounded text. Yep. Yeah. Really easy. Indeed. Very easy. No need to deal with any time classes. Yes. <laughs> OK, um, I'm also wondering if uh, developers can do a curve text outside of time class, uh, time component. Oh, yeah. So you remember earlier I was talking about the foundation that had that curved row. Um, 
So you can put a curved text in there. So yeah, you definitely can do that. And it, the sample I'll point to at the end does that, uh, but you definitely can. Okay, great. Um, so let's move to the next one, vignette. Okay, so the vignette, uh, again, uh, a lot of you may not know this, but uh, a vignette is a pretty common term in photography uh, for adding kind of this dark blur on the outside of a picture. So that's what the, where that comes from. But again, you're just showing the, the blur down here. So this is actually really easy to do. So just copy this, uh, go over to vignette and just paste that in. Uh, really the only thing I'm doing here uh, is, let's show this. Uh, I'll load that as I'm talking through. So really all you're doing is you're setting a position. So it could be in the top, it could be on the bottom. Generally you want it on the top and bottom. So that's what I do here. Uh, and when this re when this loads, it should have, you can see this really visible vignette uh, here. But if we actually run it, uh, you can see better what it looks like live. Um, so when I scroll up, you should see now, uh, oh, it's kind of hard with the time. Uh, you should see this like darkening uh, at the top and then even at the bottom with the... Uh, with the five minute meditation. Okay. Um, and maybe to reiterate, uh, what are the cases when vignette should be used? Oh, uh, yeah. So you don't want to show a vignette all the time. You basically want to show it when you have like a scrollable type screen. So in my sample, I only have one screen and it's scrollable, so I'm showing it. But it, you'd want to keep some sort of state if not. And then you basically don't want to show it if it's just a simple screen, simple non-scrolling screen. All right, so last is a position indicator, also known as the scrolling indicator. So let's do that. Uh, so again, this is this little thing right here. And um, you're probably wondering, some of you might be wondering, well, why, why isn't this, you know, part of the lazy column or, you know, or scaling lazy column? Uh, and the reason is that, uh, it, for 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 composables that don't take up the whole screen, it'll be cut off. So and it looks weird. So in this case, here's an example where this top part is not part of the scrollable list, but this part is scrollable. And you can see if we if we center it to this viewport or this whatever we're using here, it it most of it's cut off because it's you know the it's a round screen. So you have to kind of set it to the the whole uh, the device itself. So the whole thing opposed to just the, the individual viewport. So if you do that, then all of a sudden you get this nice scroll uh, in the art scrolling indicator position indicator, I should say, uh, there. So it looks right. So that's kind of why it's kind of up at that level. Um, but this is actually really easy to do. So you just copy this, um, paste it over here. Uh, and really, it, it, it uses the, uh, the, the list state to kind of figure out where where it is to show it properly. So again, we've already moved up the uh, the list state here above the above the scaffold. That's called hoisting. You can learn more about that later if you don't already know. But I've just moved it up here so I can access it here. And uh, so if I actually the preview shows it as well, so you can see what it looks like on a square device. Um, and then I'll show what it looks like on a round device. Uh, so. Give me a second here. Yeah, so there's there's what it looks like. It's straight, uh, but if I uh, if I run it on this, it should be curved. Uh, the other nice thing about this is it disappears when you stop scrolling, which is a nice feature. It does that automatically. So you can see here the time will disappear, scrolling will show up, and when I let go, it disappears, which is great. Um, and then and, uh, yeah, for position indicator, uh, does the position indicator only support scale in laser list state? Oh, no, no, no. It actually supports many more. So you can do scroll state. You can do uh, lazy list state. Um, it can do some other stuff with uh, buttons and uh, sorry, side buttons and rotating bezels, too. So there's lots of OK. Options. All right. Yeah, actually, in fact, we didn't even name it as a scrolling indicator because of uh, uh, because of possibility to handle 
rotary input events. And uh, for developers, it might be uh, good to know that you can use rotary input events for handle such things like uh, controlling music volume. And those are also available within uh, scaling uh, lazily state. Yeah, oh, that's very good points. Uh, and then here, so we've done this. Oh, we're at the end. Awesome, congratulations. Hooray, you did it. Uh, so what's next? Um, Maybe first I dismiss this. Uh, so uh, we have some other code labs. Those aren't Compose related, but you can check them out. They're where related. Uh, if you want to read more about um, Compose itself, we have a blog post where we wrote a lot about it. We put together some simple and a, the complex sample. That's the one I was talking about with a single activity and multiple screens that you can kind of move around with navigation, handles all that stuff. Uh, and then I point again to the uh, Compose training. And again, we, we want to follow what uh, the bigger Compose team did, where they kind of came out early and got a lot of feedback from developers and incorporated that into the release. So um, this is a developer preview, and we want you to influence the API. So make sure you share your feedback. Either uh, we have a we have a issue tracker here. You can add it there, or you can we're on JetBrains, the JetBrains Slack, uh, the, the Kotlin one, and we have a Compose Wear channel. And um, I and a bunch of the engineers um, and Ksenia and a bunch of us are on there. So make sure you can go there after the case and say, let us know if you feel like something's missing or not. Okay, uh, cool. Again, well done, everyone. Um, and uh, we have uh, some questions that are coming to us. Uh, one question was about, uh, is there any editor like motion layout editor for the animations on Wear OS? Uh, so right now uh, we have some um, updates for IDE coming in soonish time, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll update uh, developers as soon as we have more guidance around um, tooling. Uh, and also, just to mention, uh, we also have some more components on the roadmap, such as speakers sliders, uh, progress indicators, and simple dialogues. But in case if you um, need other components that you would like to see on Wear OS, uh, please submit the feedback. Please let us know. Uh, we are very approachable to developers' feedback. Yeah. Definitely, the more feedback, the better. We want to hear what, what we need uh, to make you successful on Wear. All right, uh, let's wrap. So um, yeah, again, uh, as I said, there are more changes in our roadmap. So we encourage you to join our dedicated Slack channel, as Jeremy mentioned. So we have ability to share your feedback and bring your questions directly to the Google team. And also just to remind that Compose for Wear OS is currently in developer preview. So it's a really good time to start experimenting and scaling your existing Compose knowledge to Wear OS. Yes. Thanks for joining us today. Happy coding. Happy coding. Bye.